Hi, everybody, and welcome to an episode of We're Never Stuck with Fallon and Lily. We haven't done an episode in a while. We have been a bit busy, but here we're back. And today we're going to talk about love letters, signals, and insights. And and do you want to start us off, Fallon? Because this was kind of your, your <laughs> idea in a wonderful way. I love it. Yeah, I love talking about this because I like noticing like the signals to like get you like out of your head and know that you're like caught up like instead of like trying to look for like a reason in like is it this is it this is it this it's just like this little like I, I'll just I when I'm irritable is the number one irritable I'm way too caught up I'm way too overstimulated I'm feel like I'm gonna get mad any second here <laughs> yeah I would, I mean, before I came into the principles and I also, I honestly think it took me, it's a more recent thing that I've realized that, you know, definitely within the past year or two, that irritability or like seriousness is a love letter. Is that, would you like a year ago, would you ever thought of irritability as a signal or as a love letter? No, I think that's where it was like my fear of insanity. Like, okay, I'm irritable. I'm not supposed to be, this is insanity. It's coming any minute. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, I I have too much going on. I need to take a break. Like, cause if and then if I don't take a break, that's when I get more signals. Like my mouth gets dry, my heart starts to pound, it gets shaky. So yeah, if anybody's listening and this is maybe your first time and you haven't heard us talk about it before, this was first introduced to me by my one of my amazing mentors, Dr. Bill Pettit. I first heard him talk about this about five and a half years ago when he was talking about symptoms being friendly alarms with information from love. And he'll call them that friendly signals or love letters. And I was like, what? And I actually hated it because it was, I still really disliked, especially the fear of insanity, the derealization feeling, even though I didn't experience it, I was starting, it was starting to fall away. I thought, how is that a love letter? How does this have anything to do with love? I hate everything about feeling uncomfortable me mentally and physically. What is this like? And I almost felt like, don't even tell me that I'm going to try to love it. You know, like, what does it mean? And when, how I see it now is everything our body does is intelligent. So when we get hungry, there is some uncomfortableness, but that hunger is an important message. Like you need fuel, you need calories. And as Fallon was saying, the signals get louder when we ignore them, you know, like a hunger signal. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, I can't ignore it now. Um, and kind of like when it's like, mommy, 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 you know, and we, in a panic attack, it's a really big wake up call you know, and so that's okay. We, you know, sometimes it, it, it comes and Dr. Pettit used to call it a Denozo head slap because he loved that show NCIS. And it's like, yeah, um, Gibbs would slap Denozo on the back of the head. And so he calls a panic attack, a Denozo head slap. And I truly see irritability as a head slap for me, you know, and what's such a gift is that when we can notice our signals earlier before they go to panic attacks, um, we just see it, but seeing it without judgment and also what you were seeing it for what it is. Oh, I'm caught up. I'm overstimulated. I'm overwhelmed. Not like the nonsense of, oh, I'm going, <clears throat> you know, but when we don't, yeah. I see it as such a gift because I can, it still is something for me to learn not to be too serious about my life or my business. But when I go to seriousness, I lose. So a very early signal is to lose a good feeling. We're we're just not as content. We're just not as easygoing. And most of the time I really am an easygoing content person. So when I see it, I'm like, oh, it's a tap on the shoulder. You know what it just made me think of? Do you ever like get your feelings to hurt? Like when your feelings get hurt and you just feel this this pain, oh, like this feeling in your chest, like a hurt feeling. And then you like you'll cry, either you might cry and then after that you feel better because it's it's kind of like a relief like you know so maybe like it's just me I just seen that so maybe that's like a signal like you yeah. can see signals like in anything I feel yeah you know what and sometimes so I was starting this community which you're a part of and I'm really happy with it but I had a lot of thinking about it and I also <laughs> wanted to be intentional about um 
I wanted to kind of set some guidelines from the beginning. And one was I didn't want other people offering advice to each other. I really wanted it to be simple and everything really coming from me and from the three principles. But I also was like, when I had to set some boundaries, I had all these thinking of like, oh no, what if people are unhappy? What if they're going to leave? And I think just some of it also, I can't offer one-on-one advice in comments just because there's so many people. And so sometimes saying, oh, I'll make a video about it. My heart hurt. Like my heart hurt, I think just because I had so much thinking in the beginning of setting up the community. And, and also sometimes I still had thoughts of like, I didn't launch it well, like it's not good enough. And I, the heart hurting really woke me up. And I just actually, and I'm not saying it is a technique, but what I did is I just put my hands on my heart and I'm like, everything is okay. Even all I knew is I was feeling my thinking. And as I sat here, then I did, I just started crying, but the tears were like a release. Like, I think that the heart hurting for me was this energy that built up from my thinking from like, my heart was really invested. My heart gets really invested in work, but it doesn't mean, um, And so it was also for me to signal to like step back and see how my thinking was off. And, but just to your point, yes, sometimes crying for me, um, like, I feel like it's literally like releasing energy sometimes. Yeah. You kind of feel good afterwards. Like I I always, I heard someone say like to do a good cry, (laughs) like it's not a bad thing. You're just feeling your emotions, which sometimes can be good. And sometimes can be helpful. You have a shirt, I think. That's where I got that from. Don't you have a shirt? I have a, I have a sweatshirt that says crying is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. My son took it over and he, he wore it for a while. I used to beat myself up too, like getting these symptoms. Like it's a wobble. It's a setback because here I am again. But now it, it, you look at it as like thank you (laughs) right like and you just kind of like work your way through it if you even get a symptom I know it's so interesting that you say that because I used to think well if I understand the principles I'm just never going to get caught up again and I'm never going to feel anxious or I'm never going to be serious and I used to beat myself up and think I don't understand the principles oh god and have all this thought and now I'm like oh I'm human and I don't have to drag myself down um by yeah, just sometimes getting caught up. And I'm grateful that there is a signal um, because truly it is my understanding can deepen then. Yeah, I, I totally feel that. I feel like it gets, like last night I was having, I was feeling a little anxious, but I just like sat there and I was like, oh. I watched my show and I just like let the feelings be there and I cried a little and then I felt a little like, I remember like looking at the TV and it looked like it looked weird, but I was also like exhausted. And then I kind of just fell asleep. I kind of like let it be there for like, I don't, I'm, I'm totally into being okay with the symptoms being there now because it's just, it's good for next time. I like to look back and it's like, I don't even have to look back in a journal. I can just look back in my mind. (laughs) Ah, Yeah. If you're open to it, I remember when we were kind of talking about maybe doing this on Friday and you had come off of having some sleepless nights and then you had some insights and started sleeping great. And you were like, in that time, you were like, I love this feeling of having clarity. Like it sounded like you had some symptoms and then you didn't. And, and I don't know if you're open to talking about what you see. Um, <laughs> Cause I, what I loved was you, one, I felt like you were like, you were reflecting on the past. You weren't analyzing it and you felt stronger in a way or whatever. I don't want to put words into your mouth, but I felt like you had been able to reflect on what maybe would have been a troubling symptom of like, oh my God, I wasn't sleeping. And I was having songs in my head and you saw it in a different light. Yeah, actually that was, I don't like that. I hate that symptom, but it's like, I got really, really, really good sleep. And like the next day I was like, cause when you're in it, you just, it was like, what if it was the chocolate that I ate? What if it's because I had caffeine? Did that Pepsi have caffeine in it? Like, did I grab the wrong one? What if it's that like, you're just, you're going and going. Then I got a lot of sleep. I don't know how I just slept like really good. And then I woke up, I'm like, what if it was nothing? And who cares if I eat junk food at night? Like, what if it's, 
okay and like tonight I don't need to be afraid like I don't even need to think about it like because I was waking up just like feeling like I was shaking again just not sleeping good like what if it was because I just kept thinking about it so I don't I don't even remember the next day I think I just I'm just eating what I want to eat because I like to have a snack at night and then I'm going to bed and I'm falling asleep with like ease I'm not and although it did happen the other night, but I just like laid there. I didn't even like worry that it was happening because I just recently felt this. And I know that it, this experience that I'm feeling, I've already felt before and it's, it was okay. I was okay. I ended up not, nothing happened, you know, nothing was wrong. Yeah. What you're sharing makes me think of like somebody who's in the community. Um, she had gotten, she had, um, some stuff happened and, and, um, she had experienced a lot of anxiety and panic and then found a lot of comfort in her mom and was kind of <clears throat> in her words, reliant on her mom. Also, I had permission to share this anonymously. I never share without permission, but, and then her parents love to travel in the winter. And so then they've been traveling and she, she stayed home alone and her sister came over for a little, but she experienced a panic, but her sister didn't panic attack. Her sister didn't even notice. She like sailed through it. And she felt, and then she even told her sister, she could go home alone. And she said, it's one thing to not experience anxiety and panic, but it's another actually to experience it without getting caught up. And she felt so empowered and like a badass, you know, and I feel like that's, it's almost even more empowering where you're like, oh, I was anxious and panicky and I was fine. And it's like, and it flows and it's, um, and it's, it's really interesting. Cause it's like when we can have symptoms or have an experience without the fear, I feel like we just feel limitless and unstoppable because then it's like, right. so our whole life being like, I'm only going to be okay. If I never have an intrusive thought, if I never have a sleepless night, if I never feel anxious, then we're so afraid of triggers. It's like walking on eggshells. Oh, I don't, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to watch that. I don't want to read that when we're like, actually I can have any experience knowing, you know, the name of our podcast, knowing I'm never stuck. I'm always feeling my thinking. It's always coming and going. I always return to balance. It's like, oh, there's just such freedom in that, you know? And that's what I think I feel is I continue to go on where sometimes I get caught up big whoop. Like then I'm just, it's, it's, it's just like complete freedom where, yeah, sometimes I drink a little too much coffee. Um, right. I I thought of you when you said that when I, cause I was drinking decaf for a while and I'm like, I can't even drink caffeine. But I'm like, wait, what if it's okay? Cause I'm like, if I have caffeinated coffee, I'm just like, I watched your one video. I was like, Oh my God, that's me. Like I have to sip it slowly. I can't like, cause I just, I don't want to be jittery. I don't want to feel weird. But my decaf, I'll have that cup of coffee gone in like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we I can... just started like loving the signals. Hmm. What talk more about that? What do you what do you yeah, tell me more? Well, I started like looking at like today I woke up and I felt like really good. I, well, so like last night I get into like this thing with my husband and he was not very nice. And I noticed my signals. So like, and I remembered that like, I wanted to yell and I wanted to say so much stuff, but words hurt. And then I started to like, oh, I'm shaky. My heart's hot and I got dry mouth. Maybe this isn't a good time for me. So like, I kept cook. like I came in, I grabbed the baby. I had to bring my son to my dad's. He went to sleep when I got home. I like, did not wake him up because it wasn't a good time for me. And today, like I didn't talk to him much this morning. But I knew because I still, I still was there. I still was low about it because I could, my symptoms were just telling me, you know, I, I had a little anxiety today and I'm like, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready to talk about this. And like, now I feel maybe later or tomorrow we can talk, but like, it was amazing that my signals, like, instead of like getting scared of him this time, I was like, okay, this isn't, this is not going to be good. If I talk to him right now, I'm going to go to my parents' house for a little bit. So. That's amazing. Do you, let me see what I have to say about that. For anybody that's like, well, how is that helpful? What do you think in your words, what gets you excited about knowing that your thinking is not helpful in your relationship? Like what's good about what you're sharing or in your seeing? Well, if I didn't pay attention to those signals, 
I feel like it would have just been a really bad, terrible fight. And it wouldn't have been good with my part in saying things to him. And I'm sure he would have lashed back and said things to me. And it's like when you recognize, like, okay, I'm low. It's not, it's just not going to be good. And then it's like, I remember thinking last night, am I sure I'm low? Like, maybe I could just say one thing. But then my mouth started getting dry. No, 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 this is not the time. And I just remember I picked the baby up and I felt shaky in my heart and I felt like I couldn't get a breath in. I'm like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's, I'm going to go. And then when I was driving, my parents, I started feeling a little better and I was like very, that I was rec- like able to re- recognize those and not really say anything that I didn't mean, you know, because yeah, just thinking is all caught up when you're low. And I don't think I would have said anything nice at all. No. I don't know about you, but until being in this understanding, I would have been too impatient. I would have been too uncomfortable having it not been solved. You know, because I think what you were talking about was it wasn't wrapped up in a bow at the end of the night or even today, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think I used to not recognize the signals, have a conversation, but like, you know, sometimes so much more often than not, I mean, most of the time my boyfriend and I get along well, but we have disagreements and sometimes then I just, am like, oh, there's nothing. I just go to bed. Like, and it's, we're not like in a yelling fight, but it's not, it's just like, but we, neither of us were going to be in a place to talk about it. Um, and what I used to do, um, even this is so embarrassing, but like, sometimes I still wasn't great at communication when my boyfriend and I met, I, um, and he would say something, my feelings would get hurt. And I would say, I'm going to leave. And so I only did it like once or twice, like I, you know, which I didn't want to leave, but I wanted him to, I don't know, say something. And so once very early after I just said it once, He said, I don't like when you say that. And I really felt like he meant it. And so, but I wasn't like used to kind of a healthy communication. So when we'd have a disagreement, come up with me of wanting to be like, well, fine, we're just breaking up and I'm leaving, which sounds so embarrassing, but like, just the truth. So, I mean, this was super early on, like the first month or two of us dating. And I remember there was one time where I was upset about something like insecurity, blah, blah, you know. And I really wanted to like be dramatic. And, and, and I said, this is so hard for me, but I'm just lying here. And he's like, I'm so proud of you. And so I just laid there with like this huge, like emotion. And then another time, and I just went to sleep. Like, I was like, I don't think I can talk about it, but I'm not. And he's like, I'm so proud of you, babe. Um, And I just like laid there and went to sleep. And then another time something similar happened and I felt this insecurity and and dramatic and I wanted to like leave and sleep in a different bedroom. And like, he'd have to come run after me and be like, you're my miss, whatever he'd say. And I knew he hates it, but physically I would feel so like, I wanted to just be dramatic about it. And, and I knew like, he doesn't like this. And also I'm not saying that's the best thing, but that was Like, and I just was like, he doesn't like it. I'm not going to say anything good. Just wait it out. And then if there's something to see, I'll see in the morning. And, but like, just sitting through that, like rolling emotions in my body of being like, and I just went to sleep. And then some, most of the time we don't actually even talk about it. Cause sometimes I have clarity in the morning and there's nothing to talk about. And sometimes what I find is if there is something to talk about, I'm in a much better place like what you were saying. And so I think it's, it's interesting because we both came into this conversation of the three principles with anxiety and panic. And what we actually see is is how transformative it can be in relationships, you know, and we don't say things, we don't, but also some of it is what I saw too, is I used to get really insecure if my, my, my husband and I never really had disagreements. And, um, but with my boyfriend and I, sometimes we do. And he had said something a couple of weeks ago. He said, oh, well, when we had the, a fight and I was like, we had a fight. And then I, I said, because we're not having yelling fights, but I, I had this thought. I was like, couples fight, couples disagree. And I'm like, and it was so soothing because I think it used to really activate me and being like, this means you have to break up. This means it's horrible rather than no, couples can disagree. And it's, we don't have to do it on purpose, but it doesn't have to be danger. 
Yeah. I, l- I remember you telling me too, like maybe it's not a good time to when you're both like, because you both could be low. We both could not be in like the right place. Like, and we'll talk about it when we're in a better place, you know? Yeah. I feel like previously I would have, there's been embarrassing, but there's been like, I'm in there, like, you're going to wake the fuck up because we are going to talk about the shit. I don't care if it's 12 o'clock at night and you got to go to work the next morning. Like, so like, it's very amazing to see like and proud to like I sat I watched my show last night I put the baby to bed and I cried but that's okay and I just I didn't go in there I didn't want to go in there you know it wasn't the good place or time to me it's like being okay with being uncomfortable being okay with a little bit of uncertainty you know where because that's that's what's life-changing is, oh, okay. Everything's not quote unquote perfect right now. Like, and that's okay. I'm, I have the patience to just be exactly where I'm at right now. You know, I think it's such a gift. Um, and I think sometimes when we are used to running in a very anxious place, we have such a low tolerance for things being a little imperfect. And then Like, we're like, oh, that's all right. Like, I can, I'm okay with this. I can just watch my show (laughs) and be fine with it. I end up feeling good too, actually. Like you start to, like, well, I had a nice little bit of a long long time. (laughs) That's great. Cause I've never, I feel like I'm never alone. So yeah. Yeah. I just love that. Like to see it now anxiety is not like a bad thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I know I think I had talked about my Halloween experience you know I didn't realize that I was taking it really seriously being the parent and like you know kind of whatever looking out for the boys And so I got home and it wasn't until I went to drive home that my heart was beating and I was shaking and I never feel like that, but I had been, I think like in a fight or flight for like two and a half hours, but I thought, Oh, isn't this so interesting? And I didn't beat myself up. I didn't even think of it. Yeah. Was it a wobble? It wasn't a setback. Like it was just a love letter. And I was, but it was like, whatever, you know, I just, I actually, I felt really empowered. I thought, Oh, isn't this so interesting? Like, isn't this it was just such an interesting experience. Um, and it's, it's like, I never would have thought that before. Like, Oh wait, like, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, I have to never be fighting, never have a physical symptom, never like da, 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 all these things. And it's like, what's on offer is really, yeah. Being okay with, with, with it all. Yeah. I never thought I would be okay at all. I always thought I'd be stuck. I I've had like, random little thoughts like just pop in like are you sure like you're okay like <laughs> or, or do you have anxiety still all day long every day and then I remember telling myself but if I do it's fine <laughs> I mean I guess I I don't know it's in my brain if I if I'm gonna if I have to be an anxious person forever maybe that would be okay maybe it's fine maybe there's not a big it's not a big deal and that was like, what? Why did I ever say that? Because <laughs> I used to be so scared with like every symptom. Mm. What does that mean to you being an anxious person then? Like right now? I'm human. <laughs> it's, I, I, I just changed my relationship with my anxiety and it's just a part of me now. It's not a scary part of me anymore. To me, it's a part of me like, I were to get my feelings hurt or if I were to get angry for a minute or irritable and I do get scared sometimes but I think those are just times where I'm like really caught up and it's trying to be like hey you're too much in your head yeah. let's uh do something else or, you know yeah well yeah it sounds like you just have an understanding of anxiety and you're just a person who sometimes has unhelpful thoughts and most of the time yeah. recognize them as unhelpful, but sometimes our thinking is so invisible. 
that we, we get caught up still, you know, but it's like, cause that's thought it's like, I had, um, I feel like we were both on that call with Aaron and I feel like I wrote something down that he said that, um, was helpful. Um, I don't know if it was that, but you know, you're always experiencing whatever you're thinking about and it's up to you how much you think about it. <laughs> I, he did say that. I lo- He was so good. <laughs> He's so good. I know. And not to be on a tangent, but we'll, maybe we'll do another one and we'll talk about trauma. Um, you know, I was so proud because I was so scared. You know, I was telling you, no, like, I was like, I cannot say a thing. There's too many people on here. There's, I can't speak. I was like, because I'm comfortable with you. I feel like this co- comfortable connection. I'm like, he's a stranger. I can't do this. But then he called my name and my heart was pounding. I'm like, I got to do this. And I just did it. Yeah. And so I Fallon, was, and I, I, yeah. Fallon and I are talking, she is in the Three Principles Global Community. And so today we had a call with Aaron Turner, who is an amazing um, three principles practitioner and, and it was an all Q and Q and a, and, and yeah, Fallon had wanted to ask him about trauma, but so, I mean, and that, so that's kind of the discussion we're having. And I think was that it, yeah, it was a larger group. I, and you sounded so good. Um, also, even if you didn't, like, even if you're, cause sometimes I share and I don't think my words come together, but you sounded solid. And I think it was a conversation to be proud of to me, like that conversation with Aaron, like I thought it was, you know, I felt like he was excited about it. Yes. So like that made me feel really good, but I definitely got off there and I had dry mouth. I was like, I can't believe I did that. Like, And I needed my water. And I was like, but it was great. It was a great opportunity, you know, and I would love to talk more about that, but I do believe I, Christine Heath, I think is the one that said it's a memory. And he's so right, though, because a lot of therapists want you to, like, I don't know, just you just don't want to keep thinking about it. Yeah. I feel like it's good to process it and get through it, and but you don't need to just to think about it every day. Like, it's still something I want to, like, learn about and have, like, insights about, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, Will, we can talk more about that, too. Um, and so maybe yeah. another one. Another podcast episode will be, how does this apply to trauma? Um, you know, cause that's something that I've been seeing more clearly. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about the principles is that's what our conversation with Aaron, it's about a simple premise and how this conversation actually applies to every aspect of life. Um, but we don't need to see it all right away. Cause I was first like, how does this apply to trauma? And then I've done some trauma work with Rob Cook. He actually, I think he still is maybe doing free trauma groups on Friday. I'll send you the link. So anybody we're talking about Rob Mm -hmm. Cook is amazing. Rob Cook on YouTube. He has a life after trauma series. I think it might be called something Mm -hmm. else now, but it's, it's amazing. I've done a course with Rob to be a trauma advocate. Um, And so maybe that's, that's part two, but maybe we'll, we'll close it up this, this podcast talking about symptoms as love letters. I think that that was, I love that. yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we talked about more things, but, and I guess also wherever you're at, you don't have to see your symptoms as love letters right now, but it's just kind of offering up for you to consider that mm. just like when we get a dry mouth, whether it's not from anxiety, that's a signal to drink some water. You know, we're always getting yeah. everything our body is doing is intelligent. Um, I saw that with even fatigue after COVID. I think I've talked about that because at first I was like, I should be walking more. I should be back to exercise. And then I thought my body, I'm fatigued. That's my body saying it needs rest. Like, why would I do my body is telling me it wants rest. Um, You know, and I started to be so grateful of like, oh, I'm tired. My body's saying is tired. Like, you know, sometimes we think, oh, I shouldn't be tired. I should be over this COVID. Or if we're tired midday, no, 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 keep going. My body's talking to me, you know? Yeah. Kind of like you shouldn't be anxious. There's no way you're going to live if you could be anxious. Like that's, that's how my mind was like for years. Like you're, you can't be anxious that you're not normal. Like nobody is like you, you need to stop. But now it's like everybody like you is sitting in the middle of mental health. I know there's, everybody has probably thought what I've thought or felt 
of symptom that I have felt. And it's so validating to me. And that's what I look for in love. I love the validation and the reassurance and I used to beat myself up for that too. You can't call somebody. You can't get reassurance again for the millionth of time. But yes, I can. Now I can. I, I do. And I don't care. And I feel like I have a good group of people that don't really care either. So we just kind of validate and reassure each other. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, I think also the place that it's coming from, if it's coming from insecurity, like, oh my God, like in, in this fear, rather than love, like I'm going to call my friend. Cause that always makes me feel better. Great. You know, I had a woman who we had at a session and she would call her grandma, but, and actually she would put all of these barriers because she would call her grandma when she was driving, but then she'd say, I can't call her until I'm this far into the drive. And it was so much thinking about it. And it's like, what a gift. I hope when I'm a grandma, if my granddaughter wants to call me every time she drives to her far distance work, how lucky would I be? You know, like, and so yeah. I think sometimes when we put too much pressure, I can't call my friend or I'm not going to do this. It just overcomplicates it. And when we really say, oh, how great. Like if it's like, call my friend because it makes me feel good. Um, especially when we're in this conversation, you're deepening your understanding, you're understanding anxiety, you're understanding thought. You don't need to overcomplicate it and put unnecessary restrictions. Yeah. I feel like it makes me like to notice that because I always overcomplicated it. I feel so much better now. Like yeah. I don't beat myself up for it anymore. And I kind of, because before it felt like I stripped that joyness out of calling a friend. You know what I mean? Like, because here we go again. But now I, I, it's crazy. I didn't, I don't remember even really doing anything. I just don't, I'm not like, Aaron, didn't Aaron say that like, it's like a junk thought, like insecure, like don't trust it. Don't even like, it's a no. Like, <laughs> it's not good. Like, and I was always so insecure and caught up with being able to like get reassurance. And now I'm just like, I think I want reassurance on this. So I think I'm going to call somebody. <laughs> if you had a parting word on love letters, what would it be? Embrace them. <laughs> I love that. Embrace them. Yeah. I feel like the more if you try to embrace them, the less, the lesser, you, the more you'll become with them, and and the lesser fear, fear you feel, maybe if that's yeah. correct. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody's experience is, is is theirs, but I think that's wonderful. If that you're like, the more I embrace my experience and and these love letters, the more I see, the more free you know you feel and. So to me, my parting words were just to be curious. Don't believe anything we're saying. Try it out for yourself. You know, like yeah. does irritability sometimes feel like a love letter to you? You know, that you're maybe you're caught up in your head or you're taking your life too seriously or be curious. What are your love letters? You know, Fallon and I have been talking about ours, you know, a common one that, well, we all have the anxiety ones, but also just irritability, losing a good feeling. And there's no judgment, you know, so I would just be curious for you, not analyzing, just curious, um, just curious. And um, if you want to continue the conversation and you want a lot of helpful videos, I have a helpful video on love letters and I shared Dr. Bill's um, with his permission in the Peace From Within community. It's a really great place. It's um a monthly membership that I have and Fallon is in there and it's just $24 a month. You can cancel anytime you get a course. We have one live coaching call a month. Um, there's also a new lesson. So a new lesson each month that I do, that's kind of under 15 minutes, trying to keep it short and keep it helpful as you've seen how life-changing being in the three principles conversation it's been for Fallon and I. Yes. And I love it too. I like, it's like a little Facebook, but just with uh, like with I don't know it's just a great community oh thank you yeah it's off of Facebook um it's on you can go on your um on your computer on your desktop and there's also an app too for Android and iPhone it's there so it's like all the videos are there it's it's really it's really nice so if you were if you are curious and wanting to learn more about the principles to learn how about freedom with anxiety or from anxiety or panic, um, I invite you to check out the Peace From Within community.
Okay. And next, maybe we'll talk trauma. Yes, that would be amazing. Okay, bye everybody. Bye guys.